Hi, thanks for viewing Dr. Linda Kramer. Today is a day that could be bad or good. It all depends on how we look at it. So what is the importance of today? 20 years ago to this exact minute that I'm now recording is when I died. Was that a bad thing? Or do I view it as something that was good? So let's have a look first because there are a lot of naysayers. There are a lot of critics, people who don't believe me. Here is my medical file from the hospital. 168 pages of ECGs, doctor's notes, all there with me in hospital that you can have a look at. So now let me put that away. So basically, a lot of people want to know how I cope being a person who has lived through that trauma. Let's go there today. Let's talk about how we can make today better or worse than the worst case scenario that we've ever experienced. So the first thing we've got to identify is what is the worst case scenario? We die. That's already happened to me. So basically, how do we get through it? You know, our mind, who's ever heard of the words 2020 hindsight? You know, it's like 2020 vision when we look back and perspect on something. Um, we use out that perspective. So what happens with this is when we look back on a past experience, whether it be traumatic, extremely grief or sad situation, something else that happened that we just didn't want to happen to us, we can look back and say, well, was it as bad as what it really was? Because that's the beauty of perception when we look back on a th subject or an experience or a person, how they acted to us. So when we look at something like what happened to me 20 years ago to this exact minute where I was lying on the floor clinically dead, how do I turn that into a positive future for me? For me, it's quite easy, but I'm going to teach us how to do it, okay? So the first thing is, I look back on that time as it was a trauma, it was a abusive relationship that I was in, it was a situation that I wish I hadn't been in, but it's in the past. I couldn't change it. I couldn't do anything different than what I've already done in the past. I can't go back there now and change it, right? So we accept it and say that thing happened, whatever it was. Then what we have to do is start to be grateful and appreciate why it happened. Because when life throws us these ballpark booms, you know, like in baseball, when you hit the home run, these events that we get, it can be extremely good or extremely bad. It's all about how our perception, our consciousness relates and deals with it. OK, and that's why a lot of people who can't deal with past trauma usually end up in a victim mode or they become a victim themselves where they have to suck good positive energies out of other people because they don't know how to create them themselves which by the way is all in my book heal to success if you want a copy of that so let's talk about how this worst case scenario because we've already identified the worst case scenario is if we die okay how can i be grateful and appreciate that because one it tr showed me who i truly was and then we have to look at any other people involved in that situation and say did I learn, because it's all about lessons, did I learn anything about that other person involved? So let me just surmise a couple of situations here. I'll start with my own personal one. 
my ex-husband was very abusive. He could have done things different, but knowing who he was, he couldn't. He was in that mindset of narcissistic behavior, whereas I wasn't. So I'm now grateful, not only that I identified his behavior, but I identified that I was not like that. I want to strive to be a caring, compassionate, loving, empathic, understanding person. He couldn't demonstrate those. And that's why he's now my ex. We simply walk away when we're not on the same energy. Okay? So I'm extremely grateful. I say every day, I thank him for showing me his true colors. It thank you for showing me who I truly was. I'm a person who can stand up, be independent. Look at me now, I've got my own YouTube channel. You know, I'm managing with a 14 year old, I'm a single mum. Think about all the positives that your life is now generated because if, we, if it wasn't for those past traumas or um, grief stricken situations or experiences, it would never have molded us to be who we are today. Okay? So when we these things in our lives get thrown at us and boom, car accidents which are sudden, injuries, illnesses, abuse from others or situations that we've out, um, created within ourselves, think of these all as opportunities. What did that opportunity allow you to do after it so let's go into some other situations a guy's at work he breaks his leg he finds out that he can never work in that same job again because now he can't use his legs which he needed to use for his job so he's sitting there he's got two options one he could go into woe is me and say oh my god i'm useless i've got no self-worth no self um, respect i don't love myself anymore i hate the person i've become the he will spiral down into depression because he's living in that past. Whereas if we want to flip it over and become positive, we look at that broken leg and you say, you know what? I can't do what I was doing. Perhaps I could try this. It's that reaching out, stepping over that boundary and starting something new because a lot of people can't do that because of that fear of the unknown of what is coming in our futures and that's why we stick so hard with our own routines and habits we don't want to break those habits because that was our security blanket so sometimes life if we do have a life path and a life contract and we're not on it we will get these situations in our existence. So then we have to get back onto that track. Okay. So let's go there with my personal experience because I like you learning from my personal life. Okay. I've always been a psychic medium. I've always had the ability to see ghosts and spirits. I've always had, therefore, the ability to help others who have lost people yeah so what did they do to me on may 5th 6th and 7th 2001 it started with a fight that i had with my ex-husband on the night of the 6th of may i went to bed and at 2 p 2 a.m which was the 7th of may which is virtually right now as i'm talking he found me unresponsive no pulse no breathing and i was blue he ran for the phone, he got the phone, he started CPR while he was talking to 911 in America. And then the Ambos, the fire people and the sheriff all came to the house, which I saw because I was floating in the living room watching them all come through the front door. Then it got weird after that, because that's where my five year trip to heaven came in. Okay, so let's have a look at the opportunity they or the universe god whoever you want to call the higher deity or enlightened energy field what did they do to me they've put me into a position 
where they put me back onto that life path. They've made it extremely clear. Linda, we want you to do this. We want you to talk about your death. We want you to talk about what it's like to live in an abusive relationship. Because remember my first husband, he was extremely abusive as well. Physical and mental abuse. I didn't learn the lesson from that. So I went to America and I got it again. It mirrored because I hadn't healed it, hadn't grown from it. So now I've got that same experience repeating itself to where they had to push me back onto my path. So when I came back to Australia, yes, I went and got a job. But in between that, I've studied psychology. I've studied life coaching. I've studied mentoring, inspirational talking. And I've now put myself into a position which is back on my life path. I was talking to a lady the other night. She had an extremely bad injury and she ended up having an operation. She said, I can't do what I used to do anymore. So now I work from home. I can sit at the computer and I've opened up my own online course where I teach people stuff. And I said, so when you were going to your office nine to five, how many clients were you getting? And she said, oh, not many. I was struggling. But as soon as I had that operation and I started working from home because I couldn't drive anymore, I started getting all these clients. So see what it's like in perspective. We look back. So if you look at the timeline, she was struggling. She was only getting a few clients a week while she was doing it, going to the office nine to five every day. So what happened? She got this illness, injury, operation required where, boom, She's now working her life better. So her operation wasn't something bad. It was an opportunity. It was an opportunity that she grabbed by the horns of that bull and rode it to become successful. So guys, when things do come into our lives and you think, oh my God, can it get any worse? Please say it can only get better. Because one year, two year, 20 years like myself now, when I look back at 2001, May 6th, the night I died, so it was really the morning of the 7th of May in America. When I look back on that time, I was extremely scared. I was extremely traumatized, obviously. But you know what? We can pull through it. We can make a better life. And we can be extremely successful as long as we believe in ourselves. Doesn't matter if you lose a hand, a finger, a fingernail. It doesn't matter if we lose a leg, a foot or a toe. It doesn't matter if we become so ill. As long as we are true to ourselves, everything will work out the way it should. We don't know our life contracts. We don't know what's in our future. But if we are true to ourself, doesn't matter who your husband is or wife, doesn't matter who your kids are, doesn't matter who your neighbours or your best friends are or your co-workers, Leave them out of the equation when you say to yourself, am I doing the best thing right now for me? Is this situation the best thing possible for me? Am I in an opportunity to change it and make me and my life better? Okay. So when I look back on the worst night of my life, May 6th, 2001, and I died at 2.30 in the morning on the 7th of May, I don't look at it as, oh my gosh, that was the worst experience of my life. It was the opportunity to come into who I really was, a psychic medium, to come out and actually say to people, you know what, I don't care what you think of me. What you think of me does not matter to me. What I think of me is what matters to me. And that's how we all should 
live our lives. Okay? So be grateful for when things happen. Please try and say, oh my gosh, this is an opportunity. A friend of mine had a car accident. Couldn't go to work for a week while his car was getting fixed. And I said to him, my God, mate, you've just got yourself a big opportunity. He said, why? I'm losing money for the week. And I said, yes, but how tired were you three weeks, two weeks or one week before your crash? This is giving you that opportunity to recoup. This is the opportunity to look after yourself. So when you do get your car back and go back to work, you're refreshed. It's like a holiday without actually taking a holiday. So stay at home. Look after number one. So when his car got back and he went back to work, guess what? He was more productive. He was starting to make decisions at work. How things should be run better because now his his mind is more clearer. So even though he was out of pocket, he couldn't work and wasn't getting any income for that week. It all worked out okay. It all worked out okay. He didn't lose his house. He didn't lose his car. He didn't lose his job. So when we look back on these situations and you think, my God, everything did work out okay for me in that time. And that's how we get that trust. When we come into traumas now, when we get a grief in our life now, you can say, okay, this is now an opportunity for me to shine. This is now an opportunity right now today where I can make my future better. Because most of the times when these things happen to us, it's to get us back onto the path where we should be. We have no idea what our life contracts are. Okay? We don't know what's in our futures. We can never judge why somebody else does something else because they have their total life contract to themselves. They don't know it, so how can they ever tell us about it? So please try not to accuse people when you say, oh my God, I don't know why he's doing that. Why is that person doing that? Don't judge them. We don't know their life path because everything does happen for a reason. There are no coincidences. There are no ironies. There is only synchronicities. So guys, I hope I've given you something today. Today is my celebration day. Today is the good day. I give thanks. I've had 20 years more than other people have. So thank you to the heavens above. I am so appreciative of the people I've now met, the life that I've now led, the child that I've now raised. I am so grateful that I got that time with my parents. I am so grateful for everything in my existence. I appreciate and most of all, I trust them that whatever does happen to me, It'll be in accordance with my life contract. So I throw myself over to them. And you know what I say? I do have a decision to make. I do have free will in anything I do. But ultimately, my life contract that I wrote before my birth, I knew what I was going to do in this lifetime. I've already made that plan and that goal of what I was going to accomplish, what lessons I was going to learn. So how, then you start looking at what are the lessons that I learned from dying. Let me see now, my ex was a narcissist. So now I've learned forgiveness, how to forgive him for what he did to me. I've learned how to be understanding. He could only do what he could at the time. He's never been trained, he's never studied. He's never been told by anybody that he was doing things wrong. He couldn't fathom it. Most of all, I offer him compassion. And, and forgiveness and total love because even though I'd never want to see him again I still send him love every day because without that opportunity I would not be sitting here now hopefully making your life better too so that's it for today guys anything that happens in your life think of it as an opportunity the worse it gets, if you think, oh my God, this is the worst case scenario that's ever going to happen to me. Think of it as a learning curve. What have I got to learn? What have I got to do to get out of this so I become better, loving, caring person myself? 
Because ultimately, guys, there's only one person that matters. You're not connected at the hip to your partner. You're not codependent on your children. You don't even have to look after your pets. There's always someone else to do that. There's only one person that you must look after. And that is you. So treat life every day as an opportunity. Where are you going? What are you doing? What are you going to learn? Do you want to improve yourself? Because if you do, stick around. Because guess what? There's more coming. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.